Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. Sometimes trying to salvage a relationship is like trying to reheat a weak old burrito. You might try, but deep down, you know it's never going to taste the same again. Today on our space, grab your emotional napkins and join us as we navigate through the messier parts of love and recovery. Up first, OP caught his girlfriend and high school buddy in the ultimate Netflix and Betray marathon. Guess who got voted off the couch? Found out my girlfriend of five years has been sleeping with my friend from high school, but I feel nothing. Am I broken? I, 34 male, have been dating my girlfriend, 31 female, Ashley, for five years. We met back in 2018. I remember the day vividly. I was coming home from work as a traffic controller when I came up behind a car that was sitting at a green light. I, of course, was tired and irritated from work, so I honked my horn and yelled for the driver to move. The driver waved their hands out of her window. I got out of my truck to see what was going on. The driver, Ashley, was in tears saying that her car ran out of gas and didn't know where the nearest gas station was located. Since it lived nearby, I knew the nearest gas station was nearly two miles away. I offered to help her and she happily accepted. I pushed her car off to the side of the road to prevent any accidents. Since she didn't have a fuel canister, I drove her to the nearest gas station and filled the gas canister I had stored in the, my work truck. After putting gas in her car and helping her get to the gas station to finish fueling up her car, we exchanged phone numbers. After that day, Ashley and I started calling and texting each other. We connected and got along so well, which led to us eventually dating. My parents loved her and her parents loved me. We loved the same anime music and even the same taste in cars. We rented a small apartment together and lived together ever since. Every Saturday night, we would change into our favorite PJs and watch some Bleach, My Hero Academia, Demon Slayer, or One Piece. That was our anime night. I loved her so much that I was planning on proposing to her. Last year, my friend from high school, Tony, moved back to town after he divorced his wife. The first night he came back, we decided to crack open a few beers, reconnect after not seeing each other for 15 years. I told him to stay the night, since he was too drunk to drive. A week after that night, Ashley seemed different and not like her usual self. Instead of having anime night, she would rather go out with her friends and have a girl's night or go help her parents or something along those lines. Sex became less passionate and seemed more like a chore for her. She even stopped saying, I love you, before I left for work in the morning. Tony even stopped talking to me, even though we were good friends. It seemed strange, but I didn't think too much of it. This is until last week. The job site had to be shut down early for the day due to heavy rain. When I got home, I saw Tony's car parked out front. I thought Tony was waiting for me to get home so we could hang out. I walk inside to find Tony on the couch, while Ashley was naked and riding him. After that moment, it was like my brain had shut off all emotions inside my head. I felt no anger, no sadness, no hatred, no heartbreak, nothing. I was numb. I stood there for about 10 seconds before they noticed me. Ashley freaked out, while Tony grabbed his shirt and ran off. Ashley kept crying and saying that it was not what it seemed, that it was a mistake, and that she's sorry. I simply packed my stuff and left the apartment. The only thing I said to Ashley was an emotionless goodbye before leaving. I called my dad and told him what happened. I also asked if I could stay with him for a bit and he let me move into his house. I'll keep you updated on anything in the future. As of now, it has been five days since that event and I still feel nothing. No emotions, just numb. Am I still broken? Let's check in with the community for our reactions. First up, I think maybe you kind of knew subconsciously after the change of both of them. What a piece of crap they both are. If your name's on the apartment, call the landlord and tell them what happened and get your name off the lease and all the bills. Block her number and his. If anything that apartment is yours, have your dad and some friends go get it. Even if it's bed or anything you personally paid for, go and get it. Otherwise, block her and be done. Someone else chimes in. It's not what it seems. Why do they say that when there is no other explanation other than what it seems? So sorry this happened to you. This was a double whammy in that you lost a true love and an old friend at the same time. Please update us. We need to hear what she has to say, but we also need to hear the feeble excuses from your old pal. Ah, uh, the classic, it's not what it seems defense. Reserved for moments when catching someone red-handed just isn't traumatic enough. Sorry you had to witness the tragic end of your anime nights and your friendship in one fell swoop. Update. Here's an update on the situation. I finally started to smile and laugh again. I've contacted my landlord and explained the situation. He told me not to worry and that I will be getting 100% of my deposit and her deposit. Any damages to the apartment will be taken out of her portion of the deposit. I contacted Ashley's parents and told them the situation. 
They were shocked and disgusted that their daughter could commit such a disgraceful act. They wanted me to forgive them for what their daughter did. I told them that they don't need forgiveness since they didn't break my heart. I blocked Ashley and Tony on my phone and all of my media accounts. My mom was sad upon hearing the events of what happened. My father was furious because he liked Tony a lot. I don't think I can repeat what he said due to the graphic nature of his words. I'm slowly getting my life back on track. I'm focusing more on my family and my job. My mother asked if I could ever join the dating scene again. I didn't want to yell at her for asking such a question, so I simply told her that I'll think about it in a few months. One quick thought from the community. I'm happy you've smiled and taken care of business. Has she tried to reach out to you at all? Maybe she's moved a fair partner in. Your mood will only get better. Don't worry, you'll be fine. When you feel down, come shout at us. We'll be here for you. The OP replies, They blew up my phone until I blocked them. Most of the messages were from Ashley. She kept telling me that she was sorry and that she didn't mean to do it, and she wanted to work things out. Tony kept saying that he was sorry, but then he went into anger mode by saying that I didn't deserve a girl like her. He is right though. I didn't deserve a girlfriend who could break my heart and a friend that would stab me in the back. Final update. I feel I should give you all one last update on the situation. So here it goes. I was doing well with myself, although I did have an ugly cry session about two weeks ago. I think it was because the realization finally hit me that my ex-girlfriend broke my heart and my ex-best friend stabbed me in the back, but I'm over that and have moved on. Last week, I ran into Ashley's parents at the store. They again apologized profusely about what their daughter had done. I accepted their apology and again told them that it wasn't them who broke my heart. Her mother told me that they haven't heard much from Ashley. The last time they saw her, Ashley had moved out of the state with Tony, which is good for me because the farther those two are away from me, the less likely I will ever see or deal with them ever again. My work performance has improved to where I got promoted to crew lead. I'm still living with my father because his social security income checks have been decreasing over time. So I decided to live with him to help pay for some of the bills and necessities. I have been thinking about rejoining the dating scene again because to be honest, I do have my father to keep me company, but I do miss the love and companionship that only a lover would give to fill that empty void in my life. One quick thought from the community. Time to focus on your purpose now, little bro. She actually did you a huge favor by showing you her true colors. Relationships built out of cheating rarely ever last, as they will both end up cheating on each other eventually. <laughs> Just remember, garbage always ends up in a pile together. Well, at least Ashley and Tony took the trashy couple goals to heart and relocated together. It's like they're making it easier for you to take out the trash, literally and metaphorically. Congrats on the promotion though. Looks like your career is advancing faster than the relationship ever could. Do you have a similar story? Share it with us in the comments below. And next up, from workplace crush to email confessionals, OP's fiance's love language has evolved into spam and apologies. My 35 female fiance, 43 male, admitted to having a crush on a coworker. Now I feel disgusted by him. Can I, a we, overcome this? My fiance is self-employed, but often works with people from other companies. He is currently finishing a job that lasted five months. On this job, he met a woman who worked with him on the project. I met her briefly, but I didn't think much of her. Anyway, about a month and a half ago, I decided to talk to him because I was feeling neglected lately. He broke down before I could even finish, apologized and admitted he had a crush on her. He said they had a lot in common, spent a lot of time together and that she admired him, which flattered him. Due to his work, we didn't spend much time together and he felt lonely, so he started enjoying spending time with her. Nothing else happened, but he felt guilty and ashamed because of it. He told me he would work from home until the end of the project, which he had been doing, and would work on repairing our relationship. She texted him a few times asking if he planned to come back to the office, but he simply replied no. After, she tried initiating a conversation via text, but he didn't respond. Then, she texted that she missed working and talking with him in the office and asked if she had done something wrong. He replied that she didn't do anything wrong, however that he would prefer if they'd keep their conversation strictly professional from now on. He willingly linked his phone to our iPad so I could see all her texts. He begged me to let him fix this mess. I told him I needed some time to think about things, which scared him. I spoke to a couple of friends, which convinced me to forgive him because he came clean and because having a crush is normal. We've been together for four years and I've never had a crush on anyone else, no matter how attractive they were. I've been with my previous boyfriend for 10 years and I didn't have a crush during that time either. Nevertheless, I decided to give him another chance because apparently it's not normal for me to not have a crush. He was very grateful for a second chance. He is romantic, attentive, kind, loving, honest. He has a read a number of books on relationships and infidelity and is trying to understand what happened and why. 
The thing is, I know all the right things to say and do. I seem to be receptive to his advances, but none of it is real. I'm disgusted by his touches and kisses. My mind thinking up sardonic, sarcastic responses to everything he says and does. I don't say any of those mean things out loud, by the way. He repels me. And now, I'm starting to feel attracted to other men, which in my case only happens when I mentally withdraw from the relationship. Is there a way to overcome this? Have you had any experience with this? Update. Since I continue to receive responses on this thread, I made another one. Check my profile. To keep things short, I ended the relationship. Love isn't enough to overcome distrust. The community has some thoughts. First up, in my experience, once I'm mentally checked out, there's no going back. No amount of promises, effort, or guilt can bring back trust. You need to be able to trust your partner from the depths of your soul, with your body, your feelings, your life. The next person chimes in, I think you just subconsciously felt unsafe and that is making you check out. He didn't say anything till you did, so I don't blame you. It wasn't just a innocent crush, he was playing into it, as she was too to say she misses him. It was a bare minimum, the beginning of an emotional affair. The OP replies, thank you for stating this better than I could. As I've written in another comment, I can see myself marrying him, having a child with him, and then him looking for another woman while I'm still postpartum. It might be better to break up before marriage and children complicate things further. Should I just hope he doesn't do it again the next time things get difficult for him? If I hadn't confronted him, how far would he have gone? I love him, but I'm not sure this relationship is worth continuing anymore, and I don't trust him. I don't know how to move past this. I don't want to spend my life policing his every move and being paranoid each time he stays longer at work. I don't deserve that BS. Well, at least he linked his phone to his iPad voluntarily. I guess that's one way to outsource your relationship management, literally. It's like he set up a surveillance system for his own guilt, hoping transparency would win him a good boyfriend badge. Look honey, I've turned our iPad into a love detective. Now you can scrutinize me every text exchange, like we're in a reality show about fidelity. And having a crush is normal? Sure, in high school maybe, when cafeteria seating arrangements felt more important than world peace. At this age, it's more like, congratulations, you just upgraded from adulting 101 to advanced emotional gymnastics. Like, are we supposed to celebrate each time he doesn't swap phone numbers with a new project partner? If he's reading books on infidelity, maybe he should try a different genre, like sci-fi, where commitment and loyalty are standard plot devices. Imagine a future where people stick to their word like they stick to their Netflix queue, without skipping to another show mid-season. Or better yet, a thriller, because honestly, this story has more twists than a mystery novel. Will he cheat again? Is this the last chapter of trust? Cue the suspenseful music. Update. Yesterday afternoon, I gathered the courage to talk to him. I asked him not to interrupt me until I finished. I told him everything that's been on my mind since I found out, about my distrust, disgust, and loss of respect for him. I remained calm and didn't hurl any insults. I told him that what he did was emotional cheating and that I'm not convinced that it, that's where it stopped, that I appreciate the fact that he decided to read all those self-improvement and relationship books, that I hope he'll learn from this experience and will improve as a person, but that it's not going to save our relationship. I'm done. He begged for another chance, asked to attend couples therapy. He promised to attend individual therapy as well. He told me he loved me and that he knew he messed up and didn't deserve me, but that he would be willing to spend the rest of his life making it up to me. I told him his words weren't enough and would never be enough again. I started packing my stuff. He followed me around the apartment, crying and making promises. Before I left, he asked me if I'd be willing to reconsider us sometime in the future, if he proved himself. I told him that I don't see that happening. I told him that I wished him all the best, but that it's not going to be with me. I'm staying with a friend now while looking for an apartment. He sent me flowers to the office with an I love you card. I'd throw them away, but I don't want to draw attention at work. So far, I've received three emails from him pouring his heart out, or whatever else, to myself. I haven't responded to them and I don't plan to. I haven't blocked him either. He crushed my self-confidence and made me doubt myself. He might as well feed my ego now. I'm so, so angry, hurt, and depressed right now. I feel like I could burn down the whole world with my anger. I don't know how I'll ever trust someone again. My grandfather cheated on my grandmother. My father cheated on my mother. My uncles cheated on their wives. All of them had children outside of their marriages. My ex knew this and worked really hard to earn my trust, only to completely shatter it. I don't think I could survive going through something like this again. How to cope? How to get better? Well, at least he's consistent. First with emotional cheating, now with spamming your inbox. Maybe he thinks if he floods you with enough heartfelt emails, you'll need a new email server just for his apologies. 
He's really raising the bar on desperate measures. And flowers at the office? He seemed to have conveniently forgotten the part where he already blew his chance in the first act. As for your coping, burning down the world with your anger might get you on the news, but it won't solve much. Maybe take up a new hobby, like pottery. You can smash stuff without the arson of charges. Or just binge watch true crime shows to remind yourself that, hey, at least you're not investigating a cheating scandal with magnifying glass. Hang in there, OP. Trust may be fragile, but so is his ego after this mess. You'll find your way through this, preferably without setting any fires along the way. What would you do? And thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you next time.